Time to do a little cylinder head rebuilding. To install the guides, you need a guide punch and about one or two thousandths interference fit between the guides and the guide bore. I've cut a taper here on the ends of the guides for better flow, about two degrees taper. And I use this split bushing here to hold the guide in the lathe while cutting the taper. Now I have to heat the head up to about 300 degrees, freeze down the guides, and punch them into place. I'm going to install new valve seats. I've got seven thousandths of an inch interference between the valve seat and the valve seat recess. I've made a stepped tool here that fits the valve seat. This shaft goes inside the valve guide. I'm going to heat the head up to 300 degrees and hammer the new valve seat into place. Okay, the valve seats are in place. Next, I'm going to use this reamer on the valve guides because we need about one and a half thousandths clearance between the intake valve and the guide and we need two thousandths on the exhaust. Then I'm going to use these new way cutters and put a four angle cut on the valve seats. When you cut the valve seat you can use a sharpie felt pen and mark the valve seat in four places. That way you can keep track of your progress. When you put in big valve seats because of the new angle you have to cut a little bit of a relief here. You can make the relief cut on a mill or you can make a special radius cutting bit for your new weight tool. But then you'll need a collar for the pilot so you can carefully control the depth of the cut. Use fine valve grinding compound and lap the seats to make sure you got a good seal. Lapping goes a lot quicker if you grab the end of the valve with a drill. Once you're finished lapping, you can use the butt end of a drill bit to check the clearance between the valves to prevent valve clash. Lighten the rockers. Reduce the diameter of the ends to about half inch or .450 minimum. Grind off all irregularities and rough spots. Use a thin belt sander to smooth off grinding marks and to get at hard to reach areas. If you want to polish up, use a coarse buffing pad. A finished rocker arm. If you want to set or check the valve spring height, get a motorcycle valve spring height gauge. Or take a piece of aluminum tubing with a 3 quarter inch inside diameter and cut it to an exact 1 inch overall length. Mount a dial indicator on the head, install the valve, the bottom washer, shims and or the insulator, the one inch long aluminum tube, the valve spring retainer and the collets. Zero the dial indicator, measure the travel, add that to one inch and that's your installed spring height. This is the beehive valve spring. You can see that it tapers to a smaller diameter near the top. It has the same pressure and spring rate as the stock Norton dual springs but it weighs about one third less. That reduces the wear and tear in your cam and allows it to rev much higher without valve bounce. It also outperforms most other Norton dual racing springs. To surface your head, you can have it milled, but that usually takes off too much. This is a polished slab of granite. It's very flat and stable. I've clamped on an oversized piece of abrasive. All I want to do is take off the high spots, a couple thousandths of an inch. When you compress the beehive springs, you may need a washer on the top because the spring retainer is very small in diameter. A tweezers helps when you install the collets. Before you install the rocker arms, you can clean things up a little bit and get rid of one overhead oil line by drilling through both intake rocker arm spindles. You can see where I've ground through the surface hardening. Then I use an eighth inch diameter carbide bit and drill it about an eighth inch deep. After that you can drill it all the way through with a cobalt bit. Now the oil can feed up through one oil line, pass through to the exhaust, pass through one intake rocker spindle through the center and then through the other intake rocker spindle and through to the exhaust. You'll have to plug this banjo fitting. When you're ready to install the rocker arms on a race engine 
you can get rid of these spindle springs and save a little friction. Replace them with shims and spacers. Make yourself a temporary aluminum rocker spindle about two or three thousandths smaller in diameter. That way you can slide it in and out easily and determine the thickness of your shim pack before final assembly. When you're ready to install the spindle, align the flats so they're facing outwards. Heat the head up and drive them in with an aluminum punch. Have a steel strap ready to align the spindle and turn it as you go if necessary. The one piece aluminum rocker spindle covers clean up nicely. Also use the fiberglass reinforced silicone gaskets. They don't squish out, they don't need sealer, and they don't leak. We're ready to assemble the head. These are the 3 8 studs that screw into the head. You can see that they're machined or fluted on three sides. They're triangular in shape so they locate the head with the cylinders, but they also allow the bolt to stretch so it stays tight. We have conical spring Belleville washers for the studs. These are the two 5 16 studs that go up near the pushrod tunnels. You can see they're fluted so they'll stretch and stay tight. Same with the head bolts. These are 12 point nuts and lubrication for the threads. These are high strength aircraft aluminum push rods. They're the same weight as stock push rods, but they're lighter than steel push rods. They allow for high RPM and help eliminate flex. This is fine copper wire, five thousandths of an inch in diameter. Glue this down around each push rod tunnel, crossing the ends of the wire. Also glue it down around the oil return hole, crossing the ends. Mount the head and set the valve clearance. Get several pieces of music wire around 40 thousandths of an inch in diameter. Bend it just to the right shape so you can get between the valves at top dead center and measure the distance between the valves. Use clay or lead solder on the valve pockets and the piston to check clearances between the valves and the head. We're using a copper head gasket and to keep it from leaking oil we're going to seal it with Pliobond contact cement. Run a small bead around each bore, the pushrod tunnels, and the oil return hole. You have to coat each side of the head gasket, the cylinders, and the head because it has to bond to each metal surface. Let it semi-dry before assembling. If the head gets glued to the cylinders, use a piece of wood and a hammer against the exhaust nut to knock it loose. To check for coil bind clearance, bring the valve up to full lift. Use a pry bar to depress the valve and read the dial indicator movement. This head is ready to rock.